Ahí estamos. Fíjense que antes de, de iniciar con, su, con sus presentaciones, hoy tenemos nada más eh, día de presentación. Espero de que, me, de que me alcance el tiempo. Yo espero que sí. Eh, fíjense que eh, hoy por la tarde es muy probable que les mande un PDF a sus WhatsApp porque eh, hay un libro, ¿qué es este? Vamos a ver si lo pueden ver ahí más o menos, dicha. Ok, el punto es que este es el libro que vamos a ocupar para la clase de didáctica. Ojo, ojo, ojo. No lo van a comprar, sino que yo de este libro, yo voy a sacar los temas que los, son los que nosotros vamos a ver eh, en la clase de didáctica. Entonces, les voy a estar mandando unos PDF para que usted, si puede, los imprima o en este caso, si no, pues solamente los descarga en su computadora y los tiene ahí listos a la mano. Porque este libro, créanme que este libro, miren, yo lo tengo, pero, o sea, eh, miren, ya van a ver, o sea, miren, yo lo tengo todo, como decimos los salvadoreños, todo destartalado, vean. Porque es un libro, pero es que es, este ha sido mi machete durante todo este tiempo. Es un libro muy, muy, muy buenísimo y se aplica mucho a todos los temas que nosotros vemos como docentes. Entonces, repitiendo, les voy a estar mandando eh, unos PDF y ya sea que si usted puede los imprime, porque lo más que le voy a mandar son unas 12 páginas, 13, a lo mucho o si es posible, ocho páginas, creo. Entonces, si usted lo puede imprimir para estarle chequeando y dándole ahí una leída, démosle. Pero si no, solamente descárguelo en su computadora para que lo tenga como soporte también, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese es el libro que vamos a estar ocupando. De, es, en este caso, de una universidad de Estados Unidos. Ok, señores, so welcome again. Good morning. Teacher, excuse yes. me. Yes. Uh, what is the name of the, the book? Es Teaching by Principles. Si quiere, le voy a mandar un, un, uh, una picture más, más tarde. Pero es súper genial. Mira, este libro es que trae todo. Trae, bueno, de hecho, de aquí les he estado sacando las clases. Pero yo dije, no, mejor les voy a mandar el PDF para que lo tengan ellos ahí. Pero imagínense, aquí viene Classroom Application, Continuum Teaching, Teaching Language Skills. Viene todo lo de didáctica. Esto viene, saben que tengo 10 años de tener este libro. Ahí lo ando cuidando. So, les voy a mandar los PDF en la tarde. Así, eh, para que ustedes lo descarguen o lo impriman ahí como ustedes gusten. So, my dear students, welcome to your didactic class. Today is Friday and I don't know why, but I feel happy. So, before to start with your presentation, I'm going to read again the rules. So, the rule is very simple. You have to choose a Montessori method and explain it in your own words. As you remember, you have to prepare at least four PowerPoint presentations, or if you got more, it is going to be okay. And the third is it must be individual. Ojo, when you finish, I'm going to ask you many one, two, or three questions about your topic. So, Please, this is just to have a uh, discussion. So, my dearest students, I'm ready. And I don't know if you're ready to, please. Do we have yes. volunteer? Yes. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you so much. The premio, señores, no les voy a dejar homework para que descansen el fin de semana. So, do we have volunteer, my dearest students? Yes. yes. Excellent. My God, my goodness. Okay. So, ladies first. Lo hacemos? Yes. Ladies first. Yes. Okay. Yes, ladies first. Ladies first. Vamos a ver acá. Ahí está ya. Ok, Alessandra, ¿ready? Yes. Just Excellent. Give me a moment. And, teacher, I have a question. Please. Um, ok. Um, uh, the methods have to be of the we, we watch in the class. We see in the class. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, because we had this and uh, this question and <laughs> yesterday, and I someone else told me that they he think that is another, and I I made of the class. So no, for that reason, yes. I guess. Yes, okay. you're right. Don't worry. But when you got please, when you got dog, let me know. Okay, I'm available. Okay, remember, I'm available from Monday to Friday, but weekends I disappear. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Okay. Take your time. Nice. Ya saben que yo soy para ustedes de lunes a viernes las 24 horas, pero los fines de semana desaparezco. Mental. Esa cosa mental. Okay. Okay. 
My teacher, Alessandra, please go ahead. Can you hear me well? Perfect. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. And it's nice to, to start this homework, this presentation with this topic for me. And I hope that you enjoy it and pay attention. Um, if you have questions, just let me know, don't worry. Um, I'm gonna talk about a uh, plans of development, okay? And first of all, I would like to clarify or maybe mention that when you are, when you read or you investigate about Montessori, you can uh, see the principal, uh, the principal object that she wanted to achieve was a, uh, that the children will be integral. I mean, the knowledge has to be full of them, but they have the abilities and the skills of the extra they she wanted to they achieve because she wanted to prepare children for their life, not just for the past the grade. So in that case, for this reason, she uh, investigates about plans of development and she tried to make ideas for make the life easier for the teachers and try to avoid these problems or give the solution according to the ages. So the first one that you that we, all, we already know is uh, absorbent mind. Okay, when you uh, listen the word absorbent, you imagine a sponge. Well, <laughs> I, I imagine a sponge when I hear that. And if you see a sponge, you can uh, put in the in the water and she is going to, and it's going to be absorb everything. She, uh, the sponge doesn't decide what water is going to uh, absorb, right? That is the mind of the child. And uh, absorbent mind has Two, uh, two kind of ages, two uh, characteristics in this. From the birth or from zero to, th to three and from three to six. Why? Because you can see unconscious and subconscious and conscious. That is the kind of the learning that we have and how we can learn. So is this, is this, this is about the mind. When you learn unconscious, well, the children, when they learn unconscious is when they don't know what is learning. They don't know that even they don't know they, they are learning at that moment because they observe, in this case, observe the environment. And for that reason, it's important that the child, the child grow up in a home, in, in a health environment. And for that reason, that the teacher mentioned that the mother and the first school is the house, right? And in the house, is when they learn a lot and then this learning they try to apply but they don't know what they are learning yeah so for this reason it's unconscious and subconscious is when the the educator is try to teach them something but the child the child doesn't know obviously so the intention is that the, the children uh, share a uh, uh, no sorry learn but they, the child doesn't know. That is subconscious. But from three to six, it's to, it to start to be conscious. And the problem is that the, the, you know, the problem, the issue is that the children uh, have not just the process in the learning, you know? They have a lot of process that they are to the, that they have, and that is the, the that makes you a, a problem or opportunity to to achieve your uh, your goals in the learning. So remember that in that case, for example, from zero to, to zero, you are not going to to teach. Okay, where is the alphabet? Is, well, no, okay, <laughs> just. Use the things in the you try to you try to have or give uh, to the children to the child an experience and the the child the child is going to learn unconscious or subconscious okay and in conscious you are going to make the ideas 
a little bit difficult, but not, not at all. And uh, the child is going to learn. <sighs> From six to 12, reasoning and abstraction. As I told you, in that place of the moment, they start to reason. To to so, uh, but they have a lot, uh, uh, they start to have a change physically and psychological. And what does it mean? For example, if they start to lose, they start losing their sleep. And that change make the things more in English, imagine, more in, in difficult for the pronunciation and something, some, some more things. And on the noise, is, that is not a problem, but uh, you can associate the changes uh, usually uh, uh, for the physically, and then you are going to make to see a uh, psychological changes. And that because it's physically where they are more enthusiastic, you have to uh, uh, make this an opportunity for you because they are going to learn with the uh, jumping, playing, and um, activities, uh, something um, exciting for them. And you have to, uh, you have to. Uh, of uh, give this opportunity for them. Uh, we start being, they are start to be, to be rude and challenging. And you have to make also this like an opportunity and they are going to be uh, some troublesome and you have to make that they have to is, uh, keep the calm. They have social means also, and you have to uh, begin and start to make activities in group because the social means consist in they want to uh, associate sociality with the people, with the connection, and try to share with their friends, make another friends. So uh, it's a good opportunity to employ the the the, the, the working teams, working teams. And it's behind and serving and style on. They begin to stop to absorb everything. And then it's start resonating. And they are choose, they are ready to choose what they want to learn. And it's when they begin to the uh, the image, the image that the teacher shape, that the teacher talked about. It means that the the child is not going to learn everything. She's going to decide what she thinks that he needs to learn. And you have to, um, and, no, sorry, he's going to learn and he's going to choose, oh yes, is this is going to, uh, this is important for me, that is important for me. And the problem or the, the opportunity here is that you have to make the he the child think that is important for him and interesting for him and try to he learn. And 12 to 18, social self. Okay, yes, it is some is another uh, age and uh, they are in the process to discover who are who am I, uh, who am I going to do, and who am who am I in the society. And the shift from childhood to adulthood is so difficult in everything because they, don't, they are expecting a lot of learning. They are expecting of the world, my friends, my society, who am I in society? So this is everyone, okay? The everyone. And you have a classroom full of people that want to be someone and want to show who, who they are. And this this process could be some a little bit difficult. They have illness, a uh, psychological, psychological and mental, and uh, like a depression, bulimia, and etc. So it makes that is difficult to learn because they are not uh, interested in learning. They are interested in how they look, how they. Uh, how they are going to you, uh, if someone likes to me or what else, the, the growing up and everything. So it makes that the brain, no, no the development, not develop everything that they need. Yeah, 
So their work is uh, working to, towards social independence. They don't want to depend on each one or what is the, the need that they already have. And working peers is difficult, but they really, really need it, okay? Because it's important, as I told you before, in, a, in every age, it's important to work in peers, but they feel uh, uncomfortable because maybe it's not the kind of person that they want to work. And that is so, so uh, difficult for them. And the last one, construct understanding. This is more and more difficult because they already know what they already think, the, what they need to know. They already think what they are in their independent economical, mental, physical, and etc. And obviously they decide what they want to know. And absorber mind is not anymore anything. And it's so difficult because it's they usually think that someone else can't, cannot teach them because they already know everything. And obviously it's for the independence that they already have. So I hope that this was, uh, it was clear for you. And uh, if totally, you have any questions, totally, uh, let me know. Totally clear. One of the things that I like is how you mail, made, excuse me, the PowerPoint presentations very specific information it's not necessary to put a lot of information just the specific and then just explain it really good job about that alessandra and i got only only one question to you my question yes. is and i'm going to send into the zoom chat montessori said Every child learns to speak his or her mother tongue, that is absorbent mind. So what do you think he thought that? Every child learns to speak his or her mother tongue, please. Why? I think that he told her, he told her, she told her. Uh -huh, yes. What okay. do you think he said that? This is, a, okay. this is a part of the absorbent mind, so why? Yes. Yes, totally, totally agree because uh, the you know the mother or the father, depend on who he the child grown up, and that no child she doesn't have a whiteboard and begin to say, okay, mama says like that, papa mm -hmm. says like that. No, she start to uh, listening for this reason. The the first skill is the order like listening, speaking. Uh, writing and writing because she is start to to listen everyone every everything and uh, he the child uh, listen to his mother his father his grandma his older sister if, the, if he has and uh, he start to develop and has tried to repeat and then when this when this uh, progress has already end, he start to speak also and try to make or phrases like uh, water, name agua or something like that. So for that yes. reason, is is an advice that we when you are going to learn a uh, second song, you have to try to learn like this when you was a child. Yeah, excellent. And San Montessori said. Our mom is our first model to follow. Thank you, really nice job, Alessandra. Now please take a little nap, take a little rest, and just please enjoy your classmate's presentation. Nice job. Next, please. Who's ready? Me. Excellent, thank you so much. Let's see, Ellie, okay. Please go ahead, the stage is yours. Irene, I am Irene. Ah, es que Ellie activó el micrófono. Por eso fue que, ah, uh, ok. My, my confused, ok. Irene, thank you, please, ok. Ok, give me a second to share this screen. Yes, of course, take your time.
Okay, nice. Yes, of course. Okay, I'm going to start. Excellent. Thank you, Renny. Please go ahead. Okay, good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to I'm going to explain um, about the control of error in a Montessori learning environment. <clears throat> okay. Uh, when the teacher explained um, some of the method of uh, Maria Montessori, um, I like all the method, but um, when I heard about the control of error, I really like it because um, not all the teacher uh, practice that in the classroom, and that's why I choose that. Um, I have um, uh, two questions that I consider are really important. Uh, the first is, how will you feel if you try something new and someone told you you did not do it right or it is all wrong? Um, there are many cases in the classroom when a teacher try to try to teach you something and sometimes in the case of the children, because um, I know that it's really difficult work with children. It's really difficult because um, they, all the time they, they don't understand and we, we, are, we try to teach in the best way. But there are, um, there are ways how we are going to uh, try to correct them. For example, um, I don't know if you had the opportunity to be in a classroom where the teacher, uh, when the teacher uh, was teaching, uh, he or she didn't teach you in the best way or didn't try to correct, correct you in the best way. Because the teacher just said it is all wrong or you did not do it right. But in the case of the error, it said that we as a teacher try to teach in the best way, but how? If, um, if, I student, if there, are, there is a student in the classroom and the student do, uh, doesn't understand what I am teaching, for example, if I am teaching the bird to be, um, well, if the students um, confuse, get confused about the topic and I said, uh, I said to the student that he or she need to do uh, um, some exercises to practice about the topic and he uh, get confused and he did not good uh, the, the, the example. Believe me, it is so uh, uh, difficult to explain, but what uh, try to, what does try to explain that method? Um, I need to let the student to um, to do again, to try again, uh, do the, the activity. But I, as a teacher, uh, I cannot do everything. As a teacher, I always say that don't give everything to the students. Don't give everything because they need to uh, try to again to do that thing, but the teacher uh, to, to not say, um, it is not okay. You heard hymns, you heard hymns because uh, we, we are human. So we, sometimes we, we are not happy. Sometimes we have some problems or some trouble and we, we need to um, uh, clarify uh, to the student how is the best way to, to do the activity? As I was saying about the, the topic of the bird to be, I am going to explain in the best way. Okay, let's try again. And I am going to present the subject pronoun, um, the, uh, the bird to be, and some example, but I am not, I cannot do everything for the student because uh, in this uh, method, uh, the teacher should try to to um, to explain again, but not say, "Okay, uh, it is all wrong," because I hurt the students. I hurt. Okay, we are human, and as you can see in the image, um, 
the teacher maybe said something that hurt the student. So it is important to, to uh, find the best way how to, to explain to the students. And here we have the, the second question. How would you feel if you were almost done with your work and the teacher came and completed the last piece of your work, not allowing you to figure it out on your own work? As you can see in the picture, maybe uh, the, the teacher is, take, uh, is taking the, the homework or some activity that the student did. But um, in some cases, the teacher uh, tried to check the homework or the activity, but they, they, do, they, um, they don't let you to, to finish. They just say the, the activity is not okay. It's, it's, it's uh, wrong, uh, your, your homework is not good. And maybe the teacher tried to finish, try to finish uh, the homework. For example, as I said before, if I said that the student, uh, the student uh, has to do um, some exercise about the bird to be, and, as, and I, if I said, no, the, the, the example um, uh, are, are wrong, and I finish the example. Uh, it is not okay that that um, action because I, as a teacher, to allow the student to do it by uh, by himself or herself. But um, as I said before, I really like this um, method because uh, we. We as a teacher try to um, allow the student to finish or to do some activity by themselves. Because um, if we don't make mistakes, how we are going to learn? So we are a human, we make mistakes every day. And in the case that we are learning, if we don't make mistakes, how we are going to learn? So there are teachers, but well, I remember that when I started to study English, um, I, I have been saying that many times that it was so difficult for me. And I remember that I, I, have, I had some teacher that they just say uh, it is all wrong or they used to say to their student that, but it's not okay. You as a teacher to, to um, uh, suggest to your student that they can do it and uh, they can learn uh, from their mistakes. They can learn, but you cannot do everything. Don't give everything to your student because when they are learning, when they try to, to learn something new, they, they feel uh, happy because they are learning and they, and they can learn, they can learn uh, from their mistakes. <clears throat> uh, here we have um, some of the cane that the, uh, the, 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 the Montessori, the Dr. Montessori create, as you can see here. Um, this is the, um, the, the pink tower. Uh, here we have some, um, I don't remember how to say it, that thing, um, this is like- um, Like a Legos. This is logical yes. mathematic, yes. Yes. Um, here we have uh, another game that he called it like cylinders. Uh, those are cylinder. This is a game. And the, and the, and the children try to, um, try to uh, put the cylinders uh, into the into the the table, so there are different kind of cylinder as you can see, and at the same time the children are learning. Uh, this is some um, red root that they are uh, putting in, and they are um, they they put um, all the color in the same line. As you can see, we have red color and blue color, and they are learning too. 
So they create uh, some of the game uh, for the children to learn math. But in the case of English, we, we can create different games to make the student learn. There are different uh, dynamics that we can apply in the classroom and we, we um, are teaching at the same time and they are learning too. But it depends in the age, in the student age. It depends on the student age. So uh, she create, um, uh, here we have some of the game that she create because there are many, there are many games that she create. But um, as I said before, we as a teacher uh, can create different uh, game in the classroom or different, uh, we can apply different um, dynamics to make the student learn. And uh, we, we, ha we have to create a, a good environment. As you can see, um, how it look, the, the environment. So uh, this is my, my uh, method that I choose. I don't know if you have any question. I don't have any. Wow, nice job. You take into account every single detail. De hecho, ocupaste una página que yo reviso mucho cerca de, de la metodología de Montessori. I don't have any question, Irene. Everything is clear. Okay. Thank you so much. Nice presentation. Excellent. Okay, who's next, please? Who's missing? Anita, Eli, o Mauri. Thank you. Teacher. Yes. Uh, I have a problem right now because Jackie is going to help me to share a screen and she has an internet slowly right now. I don't know what I can do. Okay. Ah, eso les iba a preguntar. Hijas, ¿por, por qué me ponen a Jackie a hacer la a, a, a que les ayude, hijas lindas? Because I don't have a computer. Ah, okay. So um, let's see. I don't wait a minute. I don't know. Anna, are you ready? Or oh, Mauri, are you ready? Uh teacher, I I I have my presentation, but I think I, mm -hmm. I confused the topics. Don't worry. Uh but it's about Montessori too. Uh, no, I don't think. I don't think so. Okay, so wait a minute. Okay, don't worry. Wait a minute. Anna, what about you? Thank you, Anita. Good morning. I'm from the cell phone. So are you ready to present? Yeah, will you help me, but I don't know. Fíjense, hija, que el detalle es que sí, el detalle es que tendríamos que buscar cómo solucionamos ese, ese detalle. O, y la otra, señores, vamos a hacer algo a la, a, a, a la antigua. O sea, Eli, en este caso, hija, para mí no, no es que yo te vaya a bajar puntos, no te preocupes por eso. O igual, si tienen algún detalle de computadora, que mire, ticha, hagámoslo a la antigua, señoritas, preparemos un, un para la próxima, preparemos un cartel, activemos, eh, activemos cámara y démosle a la antigua, señores. Démosle la antigua, que yo no les voy a bajar puntos por eso, ¿ok? Así es que eh, yo creo que sí nos va a tocar trabajar. Para que no me le pongan la presión a Jackie, porque, o sea, eh, también, ¿verdad? Yo sé que ella tiene que hacer sus cosas y si le falla el internet. Entonces, eh, no, hay, no hay excusa. O sea, para la próxima, mejor, si tenemos ese tipo de detalles, porque no se le llaman problemas. Si tenemos ese tipo de detalles, hagamos un cartel, ¿ok? Hagamos un cartel y mire, teacher, aquí estoy yo, lo pega en su pared. Y no, hombre, démosle, démosle, señores, que estamos virtual, pero lo podemos seguir haciendo incluso a la antigua. Ok, um, vamos a hacer algo. Eli, nos tocaría entonces. Could you please turn, turn on your cameras and just present your topic, giving your information? I can help Eli, but I don't know if she sent me the PPT. Okay, but the problem is I don't have time. So I don't know, Ellie, please, it's your option. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, thank you so much. And Mauri, don't worry. Okay, Jackie, ya tengo ya aquí ahí en línea ya. So Mauri, don't worry. If you have another, uh, an extra topic, but it is related with the topic didactic, so let's do it. 
Let's do it. Okay, okay. Yes, I will okay. present it. Yes. So, uh, maybe... It's here. Okay, so, Can Ellie... you see? Yes, of course. So, Ellie, en todo lo que Mauri presenta, okay, nos preparamos, señoritas. Ok, ya, 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 vamos, ya vamos a ir a regresar a la antigua, señora. Ahí vamos con el cartelito, vean. Ok, Mauri, please, the stage is yours. Ok, um, my topic is for personalized uh, learning. Uh, as you can see, this is not uh, about the principles. I, I got confused, I'm sorry. <laughs> But it's a way of learning. And something to do with uh, Montessori. En mi opinión, ok. Uh, Uh, what's it? What is it? Okay, the teacher doesn't lead students through the same lesson. Instead, the teacher guides each student on an individualized journey. Okay, what does this mean? Well, the, we're going to give a topic, we're going to teach a topic, but the material, the activities, uh, it needs to be fit for the student. Okay? The, The teaching needs to be uh, given to the student in a different way than others because uh, some students have some skills and others know. And that is different. And also the way that they, they work is different. So what are we looking for here? Well, mainly just given to the student what they need. I mean, uh, there are different ways of learning. And we try to put uh, our teachings in a way that can uh, be assimilated for the student in their own words. We have role of the teachers to gather information, making a student profile, okay? Uh, this we can see in uh, the schools when uh, they make a closer with all the information about the students, about the environment the student has, about the behavior the student has. And also we can see in some, in some private schools that they have, uh, they call it where they, uh, Make a, make a track of the student, the progress about how it's going with the family. Also, they have communication. They are informing to the parents uh, each week, each month about the progress of the song. This is something that happens uh, mostly in private schools where uh, the track the tracking uh, where the interest in the student is more. Then we have to planify a flexit class. Uh, as I said to you before, we're going to teach in different ways. So, to make activities that can, uh, that can be done in, for all the students need a uh, different, uh, different process. We have also to observe the changes in the student and this is something related to the gathering of information because you are constantly seeing the student and making a list of the achievements, of the goals and all and the difficulties they have. Also, we have to make the student be familiar with his current skills. This is something that often in schools, that the same students that they self don't know what abilities, what skills, what have. Mm -hmm. And our duty as a teacher is to show to them what they are. Uh, for example, uh, I saw in some cases that uh, a student didn't know uh, that they that he could do something. But why? Because the student didn't try it before. So we need to give the opportunity to grow 
also we have the strategies, teacher training, and assessment and customizing. Okay, I said you before, you need to have a, a certain level in, 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 in assessment. For example, uh, if you're going to make an exam or a diagnostic test, you need what, what they are asking for you from you. Because I won't I won't make an assessment where I'm given topics that they never will touch. Okay. Uh, for example, I won't be given, I don't know, uh, literature topics in a country where mathematics is the most important thing. It, it's, it, it, it doesn't make sense. And also customizing. Uh, in this case, the teacher needs to have a, a domain with certain tools, uh, tools for recollection of information and tools for managing it. Uh, for example, tests, evaluations, and homework activities, all these are tools to make it. But also you need to know how to make a, a record, a dosser, how to make tables, uh, files, where you can store that information. And in this part, uh, it comes the thing of using technology because it's easier to us to store information, to manage it, if we have a system that can automize it. As third point we have, give a student opportunities in their language, okay, their language skills. As I said before, we need to prepare the students to activities, uh, to playing around, to be uh, communicating with their mates. We need to let to the student express himself. In this case, we can see that this method of learning uh, has something on Montessori that permits or that allows to the student uh, get involved with the environment, to express himself, to have an opinion, to have a discussion. Also, all other strategies have its make a playlist. This is a method that gives a lot of freedom. And in this thing, it means that we're going to make a list of activities, activities that can be touching the same topic, but at the same time can be aimed at a different audience, okay? Because, for example, uh, a student can have more affinity for the music, other prefers to read, other maybe prefer to be a drama or something like that. You need to give options. Uh, Options to develop a, 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 a same topic. In my case, I saw in the, in the literature language in high school, uh, a teacher gave, who gave us uh, different uh, ways to present a, a homework. In the case, uh, he said we can make a a painting with a little exposition of it, or we can make essay or take an exam. So we're touching the same topic, but in different ways. And always there are students who choose other things, okay? Uh, you, you don't to be worried about uh, what happens if I do many activities and they didn't touch it, they didn't take it. No, there are some students that Prefer, prefer to do things that is related to real because they are panicked to pass in school. Or there are some students that prefer 
to, to make tests. Why? Because they are aware of their uh, cognitive skills and they decided to apply it. Also, we can uh, make a flip the classroom uh, other strategy, well, other method of learning, but can be combined with, uh, it consists in, 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 in try to, to make it visual. I mean, you give the, the material to the student and the student will discuss with other mates. Of course, you need to have a control over it, okay? Because some students will just for the sake of speaking. But now, in this case, uh, we're going to have some criteria that they will need to act. Okay. And we have made the classroom more comfortable. This is something that it's, it's presented in all the methods until now, uh, as I know. Because always the environment where the child uh, is developed, uh, where is is combining, is important because they will they will feel uh, better in a classroom where all in, where all is colorful, where uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a prison or a jailbreak. A jailbreak? I, I think it's no a j a j. Uh huh. Uh -huh. A j. Okay. Uh, because that, that is something that happens in the schools that all, all is very, very gloomy, very dark, <laughs> that you can see some school with, uh, with eso barrote <laughs> in the windows, instead of windows, uh, is that. Okay, and also we have the advantage, freedom for the student. This is the main pillar. We can see the student will be choosing, will be taking decisions at the same time of learning. That's what really matters. Because it doesn't work if you just uh, give activities, competences, but they don't take decisions. They will feel uh, stuck uh, following the directions of the teacher. Something that has to be presented in Montessori also. That you can see that uh, they give the to the student the, the choose of making their own decisions of being learning what they want. We have a fast learning and effective learning. Why? Because this is customized. Okay. Uh, you see it and then see the, the needs of the students and you try to, to supply the lack. Okay, you are looking for a good, uh, a, a good, uh, a, a good performance from the student. Ah, we have development of the students. Our play. okay, this is something that the student generally has problems. And is uh, how can I learn? What techniques are more uh, useful for me? We can see that sometimes we try to memorize, others try to sing, others try to to visualize, and and at the end, uh, nobody, no, no one of these uh, is helped for you. Okay, I mean, if you don't feel comfortable with it, you won't ever find a way to study. And that's what our duty mainly is. We give to the students different ways. Some students can use map minds, others uh, tables, others maybe drawings, maybe other can do the things in a different way that we didn't expect, but it's fine. 
we are giving options and they taking decisions. A high performance from the student in assessment. Okay, this is because we're uh, we are trying to do that. General, general. Okay, in general, uh, we can see that the uh, and personalized learning is used by tutors, not teachers. It's generally used by tutors because they are private and they focus, focus on just one student. So the goal of the is to have the student, to have the student with a high degree, uh, with a high grade. In that, the is, exam. that is the objective, supposedly, but imagine yeah, but, you've but, got many. Yeah, but it, uh -huh. that, that is the, the point. In the next uh, slide, we're going to see it. Okay, a cognitive learning. Okay, we can see that the, here in this method of learning, I consider that it's more cognitive than the other things. Uh -huh. Because you're given strategies, uh, you're given material, you're given all, you're given uh, everything the student needs, but to pass an exam, to pass, a, a, I don't know, a grade, to accomplish objectives. Okay, we're not giving uh, some kind of positive reinforcement. Okay, it's and we're good, still, but... And we're still having some teachers like, uh... Still in focus on a grade and not a, and not a cognitive learning. Yeah, yeah, we see it, we see it. And the thing is that, yeah, this method is more like this, cognitive. But that doesn't mean that you can uh, combine many methods. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good. And we have the disadvantage. It's not a free time method. Okay, most of the people think that when you're saying personalized learning, you're saying that everything would be easy, okay? Would be easier, but not easy. Why? Because that the learning is more, uh, more fitted to you, doesn't mean that you won't put effort. Many people think that with a tutor, you will pass an exam. With a tutor, you will get uh, whatever you want. No, it's not a case, okay? And also we have the gathering of information can be a huge task. Okay, as you said before, uh, having too many students can be something too difficult to handle. You can uh, be recollecting information from each one. So that's why this method is so, so recommended for, for schools because many schools have at least uh, 30 students uh, for grade. And that's a big uh, amount of information. And they don't have the that structure, that technology the structure to manage it. Some schools are still use are still using papers. Uh, are still using a, a physical format mm -hmm. to manage it. And there is a, a problem. Working, working on books all the time, just complete. Working on books. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and this method is is more like a, with technology. Yes. The time the teacher needs to make assessment. This is also a, a huge problem, okay? A big problem. Because as I said you before, the activities can be different. You can have a variety of activities, but the assessments, you need to evaluate the same thing. So you need to find a way to standard, to make a standard, to evaluate the students. We have the lack of resources. No all the students has computers, internet. No all the teacher has time 
not all the teacher, not all the students have uh, a good, uh, a healthy life. They also have problems in the house. Everything has problems, okay? The student, the teacher, the staff of the school uh, needs to, to be prepared for this. Also, we have the troublesome students. This is the student that you put to do, uh, to put them to do something and don't follow the instructions. Maybe because they are distracted or because they have a bad behavior. It doesn't matter the situation, but it is something that always happens. Okay, and yeah. you need to be aware that you will use the where the student has uh, so much freedom, you have to put limits. And then the evaluation of work. This is the main problem of this uh, method of learning. Because as for each student will be, uh, will be the learning in a specific way. So it's almost uh, impossible or difficult if you want to carry along this method all the semester to put all the students to work together because it is and that'll be all wow it doesn't matter if you don't follow the rule like i said about to the montessori method but i really enjoy your presentation mauricio because you involve all the topics in one so thanks i really enjoy it thank you so much mauricio really nice job as usual okay señoritas nos quedamos pendiente con ustedes anita eli and jackie nos vamos para el día lunes siempre en su en su clase de didáctica en este caso alguna pregunta señoritas no teacher everything is clear perdón que ahí que nos pasamos por el tiempo eh, creo que nos quitamos ahí algo de break pero igual es necesario toda la Siempre cuando estamos aprendiendo, it's not a waste of time. So, my dearest students, if you don't have any questions, yes, Ale? Yes. Eh, queremos preguntarle, bueno, realmente contarle, comentarle algo. Ajá. Desde hace bastante y no habíamos, podido, no habíamos tenido el tiempo. De todos modos, ya perdimos un poco de break. Este, es que nosotros, como se sabe, este año hacemos las prácticas y hay instrumentos como rúbrica, lesson plan, eh, Ay, ¿cuáles son los otros? Eh, la carta de Para didáctica. planificar. Carta de didáctica, exactamente. Así es, métodos de planificación. Nosotros no se nos enseñó cuando se nos tenía que enseñar, supuestamente, porque ahora se nos dice, se nos piden así de la nada, hágame una carta de didáctica o tal cosa, y no se nos enseñó. O sea, nosotros hemos aprendido tratando nosotros de hacerlo por nuestra forma, Ajá. pero no se nos ha enseñado. No tenemos un... No tuvimos un modelo a seguir en cuanto a eso y ahora que vamos a hacer las prácticas docentes se nos, ha, se nos va a pedir y no, no se nos va a enseñar las prácticas docentes pero sino que se nos está pidiendo Ajá. entonces no sabemos si usted nos puede ayudar y cómo nos puede ayudar en, Vaya, en mi caso en mi caso no es parte de mi materia eh, 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 eso ustedes lo tienen que hacer en práctica docente porque antes de yo tirarlos a la piscina yo tengo que enseñarles a nadar entonces, ahora bien, en mi caso no hay ningún problema. Yo les puedo enseñar, no es cosa del otro mundo. Yo les puedo enseñar. Entonces, ¿qué les parece si hacemos lo siguiente? Porque tiempo hay. Vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Como les digo, no es parte de mi currículum. En el currículum se le llama a lo que a mí me han dado que yo les tengo que enseñar a ustedes, ¿verdad? No es que yo diga que no es parte de mi currículum no, no, profesional. No, entendemos Entonces, eso, sí. En este caso, lo que podemos hacer es lo siguiente. El día lunes termino con las exposiciones y... ¿Qué les parece si esta semana nos lanzamos en didáctica a hacer ese tipo de, hacer ese tipo de prácticas? Obviamente, vamos a, voy a comenzar con la base. Voy a comenzar con la base que es como cuando usted va a un colegio y le dicen, mire, hágame una planificación, hágame en este caso un lesson plan. Que yo le voy a decir una cosa. No es que exista un modelo, porque cada institución trabaja muy distinto. 
cada institución tiene su propio, por ejemplo, usted va a ir a un colegio, le van a decir, este es el formato. Usted va a otro colegio, le van a decir, este es el formato. Usted va a trabajar en la universidad, le van a decir, este es el formato. Pero claro, claro que sí les puedo enseñar. Y no se preocupen, no es que no es cosa del otro mundo, es algo súper fácil, súper fácil. Entonces, ¿qué les parece si nos lanzamos la otra semana a ver eso? O sea, me voy a tomar toda la clase de didáctica, ¿les parece? Sí, a mí sí me parece. Sí, no se preocupen, yo les tengo ahí, eh, no hombre, nos vamos a dar gusto. No es parte de mi currículo y no tengo necesidad de pedir permiso tampoco, porque yo tengo libre cátedra también, de hecho ya les he dicho, yo soy la encargada de la, del área de inglés, entonces no tengo que tampoco pedir permiso. Así que démosle cipotes, démosle nombre y cualquier duda o ayuda que necesiten, siempre déjenme saber, ¿ok? Que yo me puedo salir del huacal también. ¿Alguna otra duda o consulta, sí, chicos? Está bien. Ok. No, y, está bien que nos ayude. Y, Fíjense que, y fíjense que saben que, se, ay Dios mío, lástima que ya estamos muy a distiempo. Este, ¿por qué no, por qué no planificamos una clase presencial la otra semana y hacemos eso en clase también? Porque no es lo mismo estarle yo presentando diapositivas, que, o sea, no, eso se tiene que hacer en clase. Entonces, quiero que por favor ustedes como grupo se pongan de acuerdo y ustedes me digan qué día de la otra semana podemos ir presencial a la universidad y yo pido permiso para hacer eso en clases. Pues por mí no hay ningún problema, no sé ustedes. De hecho, sería bueno ir el lunes sí, porque detalle. tenemos toda la mañana con ustedes. El detalle es que el día lunes eh, ya está muy a distiempo, uno, dos. El día lunes ustedes tienen presentación o... Oh, si quieren, déjenme, déjenme comunicarme con rectoría si podemos llegar el día lunes, pero necesito que todos estén de acuerdo. O sea, porque, por ejemplo, yo sé que Eli vive lejos, entonces, pero yo necesito que, que no, no molestar a nadie, ¿ok? No necesito. Todos vivimos lejos. <risa> en serio, ok. Entonces, ¿qué les parece si, bueno, no sé, este, chicos, nos quedan seis minutos, yo llevo otra clase. Eh, ¿Les parece si hablamos eso en la tarde? Porque, porque igual les, llevo yo otra clase también. Si lo dejamos para el lunes, aunque yo creo que no, yo creo que no lo podríamos dejar para el día lunes. Ay, Dios mío. Si no, quizás lo tendríamos que dejar para el otro lunes, chicos. Quiero ver. Si no, quizás lo tendríamos que dejar para el otro lunes por la cuestión del tiempo, siento yo, porque estamos muy a distiempo. Ok, si, bueno, okay. si llego a pedir permiso, ¿todos pueden llegar este lunes presencial? Sí. Ok, sí. levántenme la sí. mano, porfa, levántenme la mano. Todos presencial el día lunes. Todo ya no, ok, nos vamos a conocer, chicos. Excelente. Entonces voy a hablar con rectoría en la tarde y yo les dejo saber las indicaciones. Y el día lunes, entonces, Jackie, Anita, etcétera, me harían la presentación enfrente de mí, terminando la presentación, armamos un círculo y nos ponemos a trabajar en. Y vamos, vamos a comenzar en este caso con un lesson plan. Con eso vamos a comenzar. Ya, yeah, Mauri. ¿Preguntas? ¿No? Sería este lunes entonces. Sí, pero yo voy a hablar a rectoría. Voy a ver qué me dicen. No confirmaría. Sí, claro, en la tarde. Okay. Ahorita no le... Esperen mi confirmación. No, 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 está bien. Esperen mi confirmación de la una de la tarde en adelante. Preparen cuaderno, por favor, pero llévense todo listo porque sí les voy a llevar material impreso, eh, simulacros y todo. No, no es, la, no es cosa del otro mundo, señores. Igual, ojo, si tienen algún su libro de inglés viejito que usted tuvo en su colegio, llévelo porque vamos a planificar en base al libro que usted lleve, ¿ok? Porque uno planifica en base a. Así que si tiene un libro viejito de inglés, llévelo por favor. Ok, señores. Thank you. Have a really good weekend. And, hey, espero nos conozcamos el día lunes, señores. God bless you. Bye. 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 Thank you.